I want to take a moment examining these pH curves a little bit more closely. This is the curve we saw of a strong base being added to a strong acid. And I know that again because I'm starting at a low pH, I'm ending at a high pH, and my equivalence point is neutral. In this section of the curve, I have an excess of acid. And that's why my pH is staying relatively low. In this part of the curve up here, I have an excess of base. And that's why the pH is staying really high. And the equivalence point is my transition. That's when I go from an excess of acid over here to an excess of base over here. And that's why I have a very sudden change in pH. For a strong base, it's clearly just the opposite. Here's my excess of base. Here is my excess of acid. Here is my very sudden transition point around a pH of 7, where my equivalence point is. The story is much more interesting when you mix a strong base with a weak acid. You'll see here that you're starting out with a very low pH, but not as low as you had with a strong acid. So this is the pH of just the acid by itself. And then as we add the base, you can see that the pH starts to rise because you're adding a strong base to a weak acid. But the interesting thing to me is that the pH then levels off a little bit. Let's think what's happening here. I've got HA and as I add a base to it, what's going to happen is that the hydrogen ions are going to go to the base and I'm going to start making A minus, which means as this proceeds, the amount of my acid is going to decrease and my amount of conjugate base is going to increase. So in this section right here, this flat part, I've got a combination of HA and A minus. I have a combination of the weak acid and its conjugate base. This is the buffer. The pH starts to rise before I make a buffer, then as I make a buffer, this pH levels off. Eventually, you overwhelm the buffer. You add so much base that the buffer can't handle it anymore. You've reached what's called a buffer capacity, and then the pH shoots up. You reach the equivalence point, and then you have an excess of base here. Now, in this particular example, they have the equivalence point reached when 50 milliliters of NaOH is added. So let's take a look at this part right here. Let's look at the half equivalence point at 25 milliliters. At the half equivalence point, you have consumed half of your acid, which means that you have turned half of your acid into conjugate base. So if you have lost half of your acid, you're down to half of your acid. And if you started with zero conjugate base but added half, you now have the same amount of weak acid as you do conjugate base. At your half equivalence point, you have equal molar buffers. And what we saw earlier is that here, the pH would equal the pKa. Anywhere else along the buffer, if you want to find the pH, you'd have to use the henderson hasselbalch equation because you wouldn't have equal molar pH and pKa. Once you get past the equivalence point, all you have here is an excess of base. And so that means if you want to find the pH here, you would have to find the concentration of your base present. The same holds true when you add a strong acid to a weak base. Here, you just have the base. So the pH would just be the pH of the base. And then as you add the strong acid, the pH drops pretty rapidly, but then it starts to level off again. This is the buffer zone. And as you see here, once again, they've reached the equivalence point at 50 milliliters. So the half equivalence point right here is where your pH will equal the pKa. So for a base, they normally give you a Kb value. And for this equation, we want the Ka value. So you're going to have to convert the Kb value into a Ka value. And remember, to find a Ka value, you could just take your 
water constant, 10 to the negative 14, and divide it by your Kb value, and that'll give you your Ka value. And then you can plug that into the henderson hasselbalch equation. Once you get past the equivalence point, here you just have an excess of acid. So you just have to find the concentration of the acid in your solution and find the pH from there.